Good morning, it's Sunday the 25th of September 2016 and I am preparing, boys and girls, I'm preparing for my short holiday to Yorkshire! Oh yes, I'm preparing this little bag of food, it's self-catering in a caravan, so I've got a little bag of food. I, I'm not one to eat out, you see, this is the trouble. Now, I don't mind now and again, but I get bored of the same old things, because generally... In sort of that sort of that that sort of place, or you know, a, a, a um, let's think of a harvester, something like that. You know, because the restaurants in 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 caravan parks and holiday centres are all very similar. It's like veggie burger and chips, and that's about your limit. And you do get fed up with that after four days. So I like to take a little bag of food. So it's downstairs waiting for me. I've got my porridge, my corn steaks, and more importantly, presents for the children. I'm meeting up with my niece, uh, Tracy, her husband, Ben, and their two children, um, oh, oh, George and Emily. And I've already, you see, you need to get off on a good foot with the children. Otherwise, it's a disaster. So, gifts. As soon as I arrive, gifts will be handed over to the two little ones. One's four and one's, I think she's two. He's about to be four, or is he about to be five? Oh, I'm not sure. It's either four going on five, and she's either a, she's either two or three. One of those, anyway. And gifts have been purchased already. Here we are. Look, look, look. First of all, for her, I've actually put, I bet she's got one of these already. A little princess rucksack. Look at that. Princess. Do I look like one of those? Which one do I look like? Let me think. I think the one with the brute brown hair. I think I look like one. So I've got a little princess rucksack to put on her back for a little swimming things when we go swimming in the pool there. We're going to Haven Holidays in Thornwick Park in Yorkshire, a bit of a long drive. And uh, my mate Ron's moving in here for, for a week to look after the house and the cats. And this is what I've got for uh, George. Now he's very much into dinosaurs. He loves dinosaurs. Is that a thing with all little boys? Do they all like dinosaurs? Maybe that means I'm gonna get on very well with him. <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, so here is a dinosaur bag. Look, a little dinosaur rucksack. And more importantly, gang, we also need something to go in the bags. There's no point in giving gifts. They'll be looking in there. Uh, you know what they'll be like? Oh, oh, there's nothing in here. So I have chocolates. Little heart chocolates from Wait. Oh, hang on, is the price on there? No. Little heart weight chocolates from Waitrose. Milk chocolate hearts. One for George. And that's all ready now, you see. Otherwise, I'd forget that if I wasn't doing it here. And uh, one for Emily. Chocolate hearts. Now, notice... Notice how I've been very, very careful to get roughly the same thing for both of them. You know, because I did think... I actually bought these hearts. I bought one for Emily and one for my niece, and I bought George a bar of chocolate, uh, thinking, you know, to give a, a boy, like, a heart thing, that might not be uh, as good as giving it to a girl. But then I thought, oh, hang on a minute, if I give one that, and no, one's going to think that's the better than the other one. So you've got to give them the same things, you see? So a heart for George as well. Oh, no, that's Emily's one. Uh, George has got the heart, and they've got the heart and rucksacks for them, and that should get us off, hopefully, onto a good, a good footing. Do you know what I mean? Well, after that, I will be popular. I will be popular, boys and girls, with the two little ones. Apparently, George has been informed that I do swimming and he can't wait to go down the water slide with me. Oof, I don't know about that. I hope it's not too high. I don't like heights, you see. How does that Tom Daly do it? You know when he stands on that thing, like 10, 15 miles in the sky, and just jumps off it into that tiny pool of water? I mean, what if you miss? You might miss the pool of water, mightn't you? Anyway, so that's that. Uh, looking forward to that. And uh, get my suitcase ready and other bits and pieces. Now, the only thing is the bed, right? The bed. I'm now used to sleeping on a super soft bed with a super soft topper. I think it's going to be a bit like laying on a plank of wood. So someone told me to take a duvet with me and sleep on top of that. So that's what I will do. And I, I might take an old duvet so I can chuck it away afterwards. Because we don't want bed bugs. We don't want bed bugs to be imported here into my little little mansion in Royal Berkshire. We can't have bed bugs in here. And that happens, you know. That's how you get them. You pick them up from somewhere else and bring them in accidentally. So I'm thinking of taking an older duvet 
that I shall burn afterwards or chuck away. Mind you, with the amount of caravan holidays I want to go on next year, I want to, bet, I want to do at least six next year. I only go away for four or five days at a time. Remember, I'm, you know, I'm of an age now. And my mate told me uh, that I should have more holidays because of the traffic that I sit in. And as, as well you know, uh, I do sit in a lot of traffic during the week. Actually, this weekend hasn't been too bad. But the two weeks before that were uh, horrendous. Horrendous. He reckons I should have either more holidays or give up some nights. Now... I can't give up nights because I love all the nights I do. Do you know what I mean? So I can't do that. So I might have a few more holidays next year. Now, something else that has come through the post. Are you ready, Manilow girls? Hello, Manilow girls. How are you? Is he coming back or isn't he? He's got a new album coming out soon. But here is an old album that is going to be displayed somewhere on the... Probably here. Are you ready? Da -da 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 -da. From eBay. A Barry Manilow... Picture album. Look at that. There he is. Oh, wasn't he young and good looking? Just like I was once. A few years ago. Quite a few years ago, really. Uh, possibly him even longer than me. But there we are. The very best of Barry Metal. Now, I had this album. I remembered this, al this picture on the album. And it was a white cover. And it was a double album, which you could only order on the telly. Does anyone remember that? I think it was called The Very Best of Barry Manilow. I can't remember now. Anyway, so there's the picture disc. I'm gonna think, I'll, I'll probably have to... I'll have to take it out of the bag, won't I? Yeah, I'll have to take it out of the bag. And I'll... Um, stick a nail in the wall. Where shall I put it? There. I'm just trying to see. Where do you reckon? Where do you think it should go? Maybe to the side. A little bit to the side. No, I can't see it there. Underneath the cross. Or is that back sacrilegious? Oh, wait, well, you can't see it now. Under, is that sacrilegious to put Barry under the cross? Or above the cross? Oh, I quite like... Yeah, like that, something like that. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure I'll find a place. So hopefully that'll be up there next time uh, you see it. All right. If it's your birthday today and I have appeared on your wall, then your birthday will be read out very shortly, boys and girls, uh, before the end of the show. Um, now what are we doing here? Oh yes, Adam has sent this in. Now you remember, you remember that dreadful woman uh, up in was it Bradford? It was Bradford, and she got fined for passing wind on the, on the bus in Bradford. Do you remember that? Apparently she goes on the bus and she makes a point of it. She bends over forward when she's about to do it. Really like that. Like that. Dreadful, dreadful woman. And once she she did it into her hand, cupped her hand and put it in the dr bus driver's face. I mean, it's not on, dear. In the dr bus driver's face. Disgusting people. A fine. She should be locked. She should have her bum sealed up. Sealed up with gaffer tape is very good at that. This, boys and girls, this is gaffer tape. It fixes everything. If you've got anything wrong in your house, wrap a bit of gaffer tape on it. Oh, yes, yes. Only yesterday, only yesterday, I saw a multi-car accident and there was a bloke with his head off. It had been cut off, boys and girls. I rushed over with my gaffer tape and stuck it back on again. And he's very pleased. He's very pleased. Once again, he can walk the streets of the UK because his head was fixed with gaffer tape. It's not too keen, the fact that I used a black one, you know, around there. He said, haven't you got any white one as I'm white? And I said, don't be so racist. 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 You should use black gaffer tape. Just because you're white doesn't mean to... It was racist. Racist comment, dear. Racist. So I said, no, I haven't got any white. And I walked off. I was tempted, actually, to, to pull the black tape off him at that point. But I decided, no, no, I'll, I'll let him get away with it this time. You know, only God will judge him for that remark. So that's gaffer tape. Now, that's what she needs to have on her ass, dear. Gaffer tape to seal the hole up and super glue to tie it together properly. Oh, it's getting a bit hot in here. Just a moment. I think I'm, I'm, think I'm overperforming today for you. One moment, please. And on goes the air conditioning. Anyway, there's another story sent in by Adam the Plumber. Brighton's i360 is facing yet more problems to gay over... This is... this is. And when was this? One moment, please. Oh, it, it was a while ago. A couple, only a couple of days ago. Uh, they were forced to endure 20 minutes. Now, the I-360 is this, is this, like, round circular thing, and it goes up a pole. It's very big, and people stand in it. So they go up, and then they... Oh, hello, there's Brighton, which isn't a very nice sight, to be honest, Brighton. It is a bit of a dump. 
Brighton is a dump, but you can always look the other way at the beautiful sea. And remember, remember, boys and girls, remember where evil people came over here to try and take over our country by coming through Brighton. I think they landed on the pier. Those those soldiers from other countries, was it Germany? The soldiers from Germany landed on the pier. They had a quick guard of machines, watched the show, and then came and invaded us. Or tried to. Good job for Dad's army. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler? Ha ha! Not us, dear. Not us. Do you think Hitler was gay? I think Adolf Hitler was gay. Why else would you want to surround yourself by good-looking soldiers? Eh? Hey? <laughs> I knew it. Gay, dear. Gay, 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 gay. That's what it is. I must get some more cups. You're fed up seeing this. We are not sponsored by Sports Direct. Not the way they treat their staff. I want to get some large cups like this. Right, back onto the story. Anyway, so Brighton's I-60, that's the big circular thing going up and down the pole that you can look out over Brighton, demanded their money back after they forced to endure 20 minutes in the enclosed pod with a man with severe and nauseating wind-breaking tendencies. <laughs> in a week which has seen the newly opened ride get stuck in the air and subsequently stay closed for two days, this new incident could not have come at a worse time for the problem hit attraction. Passengers confronted staff and refused to leave the site until they were given compensation after their trip was ruined by a man's constant dropping of his guts. <laughs> <coughs> order, was, <coughs> order was only restored after disgruntled passengers were offered a voucher for another ride and a free drink. How awful. Oh, dreadful. Um, uh, look at this. <laughs> this woman had travelled with her husband. Oh, by the way, I've got to tell you, this is in the Brighton Bulletin. The Brighton... I wonder how, what the readership of that one is. Possibly more than the blooming Guardian, dear. Uh, uh, this woman travelled with her husband and two children as a treat for a birthday. She describes the celebration and the air quickly turns sour. All was going fine. We boarded the pod. I like that word, pod. Pod. Say it, pod. We boarded the pod and we were all really excited about a minute in one. Uh, but about a minute in, I noticed a horrible smell. To be honest, I thought it was my husband. <laughs> But he protested his innocence. He thought it was funny at first, but soon changed his tune as, as it got worse. <laughs> By about halfway up, it was unbearable. I was constantly gagging. The kids were crying. My hubby's eyes were watering. One woman was physically sick on the floor. <laughs> It was obvious who it was coming from. There was this one guy who was smirking away to himself and no one would go near him. We were all packed over one side with our hands over our noses and he was on the other side just letting it rip at will. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We begged the staff to take us back down. But they said they couldn't. To be fair, they were struggling as much as we were. I have honestly never smelled anything like it. You could almost see it. <laughs> it was so thick. I can still taste it at the back of my throat. Dirty old cow. Well, get your mouth away from his ass, then, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. The paper managed to track down the man. The man was from Croydon. Oh, well, there you go. People like that. People from Croydon are all like that. Don't go anywhere near Croydon or anyone from there. <laughs> all the time. That's all they do. Matt's from my friend. Matt's from Croydon. He's doing it all the time. <laughs> Disgusting people, dear. Awful, awful people. The man from Croydon who asked not to be named. Oh come on. Oh why kill the fun? Name him. Let's see a picture. Um, provided us the following statement. I would like to take this opportunity to apologise to all the passengers who had to put up with my arse blasts. I will admit that there were some real crowd splitters. Definitely the strongest I can ever remember doing. Me and my mates had been for curry and then down to Brewdog for a skinful. <laughs> and it goes on. How old oh, must be awful, dear. Stuck in a room. Mind you, 
mind you, and you hate me for telling you this, my nephew, Gary, uh, when he was 16, I, and I took the, the family to, um, uh, to Disney when, when, when they were much younger. Uh, he was 16, Tracy was 14, Jimmy was about 10, I think. Rough, rough ages there, rough ages. And um, he did one on the train coming back. Oh, my God, it stunk out the whole carriage. I've, I don't think I've ever done anything like that. Have you? I haven't. Awful, awful people. They need to be wearing those. You can buy special pants. You know that. You can buy special pants for that stuff. It's disgusting. Charcoal pants are supposed to absorb the smell. But does that mean the pants themselves get really smelly when you take them off? Is it like, is it like contained in the pants or something like that? I mean, you wouldn't be any good with rubber pants or anything like that, would it? You know, if, if I said, you know, you had a seal around your waist and around your legs, well, eventually the thing would go bang, wouldn't it? Like a bag of, like an open bag of crisps. You know, when you blow up, but gradually the bag gets bigger and bigger. Well, that would happen to your sealed pants. So I don't know how, the, how does the charcoal thing work? <laughs> awful, awful people. Got to say hello today to uh, Robert Irvine. Um, who's just joined us on first, but hello, Robert. He popped down to the karaoke on Friday and he was at the 70s and 80s do that we did a couple of weeks ago. We've got another one of those, actually. Let me tell you when. 70s and 80s do again at the Old Eagle in Camden on Saturday, the 12th of November. So plenty of time to prepare yourself some little, perhaps 70s and 80s type clothes if you want to, or you can just come as you are, okay? So that's on Saturday, the 12th of November. Uh, 2016, 70s and 80s night at the Old Eagle in Camden. Anyway, so Robert, welcome along to uh, my Facebook, Robert. And I had a quick look at your pictures and you, you looked like a cute little boy. You was a cute little boy. There's a picture of you as a cute little boy. So what happened? You know, what happened? I do look at these pictures of people when they were younger and then you see them, you know, and my God, don't they look old? It, it's only me that I know that hasn't aged over all these years. Isn't that strange and mysterious? Strange and mysterious. Hello, Robert. Here's a question for you. How's, how's the time going? Oh, yes, that's all right. Um, oh, got to say hello to Danny Davis in Leeds, who has now started talking to me in riddles. In riddles, right. So here's here's the message he sent he sent, sent last night at 12.25 a.m. Or was, was it 12? Yeah, no. Uh, uh, 12.25 a.m. So it's half past 12 at night. Are you... Right, this is the whole message... You do in live. You do in live. Live what, dear? Live karaoke? Live show tonight? Don't you think I might be at work? That's So that's the riddle. So I, I, I just sent back a fan. No. No. That's a, no. Then he said, just having a quiet one. What do you mean a quiet one, dear? I, I, can, you, can you please send whole questions and not just a couple of words, dear? Because I, I don't know what you're going on about, dear. Is this, this is because you moved out of Wales, dear, up to Leeds, isn't it? I think you're in Leeds now. Go back to Wales, dear. You're much safer there, my love. You're not making any more sense. Ah, oh, that's it. You've been out on the uh, drink, haven't you, dear? You've been out on the drink and you're just tapping random words to me. You know, what do you mean, you doing live? What, when, why, who for? Perhaps, um... Did you mean, are you doing live later tonight? Well, I don't really do many late night shows, do I? They're very, very rare, dear. They're very rare like a blue diamond. I'll tell you what, you send me a blue diamond and I'll do a live show for you. That can't be fairer than that, can it? Anyway, so that's that. Thank you, Danny. Um, oh, did you see Casualty last night? Charlie's floored someone. He went whack. <coughs> Charlie Fairhead, the nurse, he floored someone and good. Because he was oh one of those macho, um, not macho, one of those alpha males. Oh, we, oh, hang on a minute. There's a fly on there. Oh, fly, dead fly, dear look, dead fly. One moment, please. Oh. I must remember not to lick that, lick that, <laughs> put that finger in my mouth now before I, uh, before I wash it. Yes, Charlie Fairhead floored someone. It was one of those alpha males that we all hate so much. And they're full of it. They, they really think they are head of everything, don't they? Alpha males. I can't stand them. Can't stand them. They think they should speak and everything. everyone should run around after them. I know a few like that. And I have no time for them whatsoever. I try not to, I try not to bother talking to them. 
They get on my blooming nerves. Anyway, good. Nice. Good on you, Charlie. And he was talking to his wife, this alpha male, talking to this his wife like she was a piece of dirt. Who the hell do they think they are, these people? Good, Charlie. Very good. Um, And another programme I was watching last night. Oh, it was dreadful. Uh, on ITV, it was on about half past seven, I think it was. Seven o'clock, half past seven. <clears throat> and it was a programme called Go For It. Now... Um, from what I gather, it's about people that have some type of unique skill, right? So when I switched it on last night, it was this bloke who could tell who who knew the London Underground system like the back of his hand, and it, he, that he had to answer ten questions on how to get from A to B. So, for example, from Putney Bridge to Wilsdon Green. And then he would say, OK, so you get a district line train from Putney Bridge and then you get a northern line train. Uh, then you change your Earl's Court and you get a northern line train to Wilsdon Green, something like that. Or there might be a few changes and different lines. And he got all 10 questions correct. And I thought that was very good. I thought that was very good. And if I was working for London Transport Tube Section, then I would want to employ him as being on the phone, able to assist people in their inquiries. Apart from that, what use is that knowledge? I'm trying to work that out for myself. I'm not quite sure what you would do with that knowledge. Can't really make you any money or anything like that, can you? Is that of any use to anyone? Other than, you know, occasionally him when he wants to get on a tube train. We have a good tube network here in the UK. So that was all right. And the, uh, the, the format was OK. But the host, he was dreadful. Dreadful. Uh, let, me find, let me find that. Stephen Mulhern. Now, I've seen him doing a few different quiz shows, and he's just horrendous. He's talking like I'm talking to you. Like, like You see, I'm like I'm talking to you. I'm looking straight at you, aren't I? Right? So he's asking questions, but he was looking slightly to the left of the person. So he was looking kind of over there while he's talking to him. And it was obvious, it was so obvious to me that he's not actually conversing with these people, but he's reading off some auto cue that's just to the right of the camera. Dreadful. When you get people like Bruce Forsyth, you know, and, and, and of course the, the great, um, oh gosh, uh, Bob Monkhouse, you know, uh, and they would, and Larry Grayson, all those sort of people, they'd have a little card and it says da 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 da, and they look straight at them and, and converse with them, sort of, you know, as part of the thing. He, he can only look at a blooming um, thing to the side there and he's reading it word for word off there, and it's not flowing for me. Did anyone else notice that? There was absolutely no chemistry there at all between the viewer, uh, me, and him. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. And it, it and it's just like something plastic standing there in front of the camera, reading this stuff off. Just awful. Awful. They got the wrong man for that job. Get someone who, who, who can actually talk to people. He'd be better. He'd be perfect for going on the till at Sainsbury's. You know. Are you having a nice day? Are you going on holiday anywhere? Thanks. That's £1.38. Bye-bye. Oh, hello. Welcome to Sainsbury's. Are you having a nice... It's just like a robot. A robot. There's there's no substance there. Doesn't work. Awful. Awful. Anyway, that was go for it. Uh, good format. Wrong presenter. Thank you. Now, let's do a couple of messages from yesterday. <coughs> ben Parker, who is filling in for me next week. He's doing all my karaoke nights um, next week. The two at Central Station and the one at the Golden Line on Tuesday. Uh, he writes, on the subject of me wearing my Speedos, whatever you do, he says, do not show the muffin top. The mu No, we don't. We can't be showing the muffin top. I'll have to pull them right... Oh, hang on. What, what's that there? Oh, I must have had a bit of marmalade on my shirt somewhere. Oh, there it is. Look. Oh, no. Look. Marmalade on my shirt. And now my hand's all sticky. Never mind. I've got to wash this. I've got to wash that fly, dead fly off my finger as well. Uh, I shall try... <clears throat> I shall try not to show the muffin top. Thank you, Ben. And, uh, okay, that's it. Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday today to Alan Gamble. Hello, Alan. How are you, darling? You well, are you? I did see him Thursday with his friend Chris, uh, with his boyfriend Chris, and uh, we had a good old chat there, didn't we, Adam? It's always, always, uh, Alan, always nice talking to you both. Happy birthday to Alan today. Uh, you must be about 56, 57, I reckon. 
seeing as you're uh, <laughs> 67, is it? Seeing as you're hiding your age, I'm going to have to estimate you at 57. Want to look younger? Too late. You shouldn't have smoked when you were younger. <laughs> Happy birthday, Alan. Happy birthday today to Leslie Lockwood. It's her birthday today. Uh, and I uh, hope you're well, my darling, Leslie. And happy birthday to Joseph Simon Ben, who is... Oh, DJ Joey Jigsaw. You must be a DJ. Have I met you before, Joey? Or did you just uh, friend me at some point? He's up in Nottingham. So happy birthday to you all. Only three today. And that quick. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Wrong one. Oh, that, oh that's, that's the Yorkshire thing again. Here it is. Here we go. It's not really a piano here. We'll just do a bit of things like that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Alan, Leslie and Joseph. Happy birthday to you. I think I'm in fine voice today. I'm fine voice today. That's because I've already been to church and sung a dozen hymns and a Gloria and a Lamb of God. Done them all this morning. Anyway, that's it today. Have a lovely Sunday, boys and girls. Being a Sunday, I'll be hosting karaoke tonight at the Golden Lion in Sydenham. Show starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 12 midnight, OK? So once again, karaoke tonight at the Golden Lion in Sydenham every Sunday between 8pm and 12 midnight. Now, apart from that, as I say, I'm off on holiday tomorrow, so not sure when the next video will be. Might be every day, might be occasionally for the next week while I'm away, OK? Have a lovely Sunday. See you soon. Bye-bye.